Hi, good day. It's this time of year again. To some, it's a festive season, a joyous occasion. But to others, it is a reminder of their poverty, poverty and lack, material lack. It's a time and a reminder that they are alone. Now, hi, good day. My name is Stanley. I'm a preacher and minister in South Africa. Now, this time of year, as the world is um, calling it, it's a festive season. It's a holiday season. It's a time of happiness and joy. But I can tell you, for millions and millions around the world, it is just a grim reminder of the material lack and wealth in this world. To some, it's a welcome break. And they can have a holiday. But to others, it's a time of work and much needed work because it's the only time that they have work. Isn't it so? Now, according to tradition, it is a time where the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, His earthly birth, are celebrated around the world in millions and millions of people's lives and thousands and thousands of Christian churches. Isn't it so? Though the Word of God tells us and teach us that even if we knew Jesus Christ according to the flesh, we are not to honor and worship Him as a baby and a person in the flesh and that was in the flesh. Even if we knew Him according in the flesh, today we don't know who Jesus were in the flesh. We know the Lord Jesus Christ now who is in heaven. But there were a time when he were on earth. He was born in a physical body, an earthly body like you and me. Then the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary almost 2,000 years ago. And at one moment, she conceived. And the earthly body of Jesus Christ started to form in her womb. And there is an immense spiritual thing that happened at that moment. First of all, I want to tell you the reason why the Holy Spirit made Mary to conceive and not a man. Now at that moment, Mary were engaged to Joseph. And God didn't permit for Joseph to come close to Mary. So that at the end of the day, the world cannot point a finger, ba finger back and say, but Joseph were Jesus' father. No, the fact that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and so she conceived. So she became fruitful. And the body of Jesus Christ, his earthly body, started to grow in Mary's womb. Is the fact that Jesus Christ's real Father is in heaven. Isn't it so? So by just that moment, by that type of birth, earthly birth, God made it clear that Jesus Christ never, ever had an earthly father. His father is in heaven. Now, when we think about Jesus Christ, we never think of him as, as poor. That was when he was on earth as well, now in heaven. When we teach about Jesus Christ, when we read about Jesus Christ's life on earth, seldom but ever we think that Jesus Christ were a poor man on earth. He was materialistic and financial poor, financially poor. He grew up in a home. His father was a carpenter and he worked with his father, his earthly, that we call his father, the man, <laughs> the husband of Mary. That's actually the right way to say it because Joseph was never Jesus' father, real father. He was just the husband of Mary. And so they had 
the opportunity and the privilege and the calling to look after Jesus until he was old enough to leave the home, his parental home. So Joseph would never, ever Jesus Christ, Father. That is a powerful thought. Now before Jesus was born on earth, he already existed in heaven. And let me read to you in John 1. It's also a very interesting scripture in Proverbs 8, if you want to go and read it in your own time, about how Jesus existed right from the beginning, even before anything were made and created. Now, when we read in John 1 verses 3, he says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So Jesus Christ existed from the beginning of time. Now, when we read in uh, Colossians 1 verses from verses 15, we read the following. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. So Jesus Christ were in heaven, even if, even before he were born on earth, he already existed in heaven as the Son of God. Now, let me read an interesting scripture to you in 2 Corinthians 8 verses 9. 2 Corinthians 8 verses 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now, when we think of Jesus, a lot of Christians, they only think of Jesus' earthly body. Now, especially this time of year, you get this, this the depictions of a baby in a manger and a woman and a man standing by this manger and it's called Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Now, let me read another interesting scripture to you and that we can find in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16 therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known Christ according to the flesh yet now we know him thus no more so we don't know Jesus Christ according to the flesh anymore even at, the, at that time, when a lot of people were still alive, when Jesus Christ were on earth, Paul wrote to us, he wrote to us, we are not to think of Jesus Christ how he looked on earth, as a baby or as a man. And a lot of people depict and you get these pictures this time of year, this man on the cross or this man that is called Jesus Christ that somebody drew somewhere. That is not Jesus Christ. He never, nobody in this entire world that existed today knew how Jesus Christ looked. And we are not supposed to honor Jesus Christ as a fleshly human being because he died and he rose from the dead. And too often we as Christians are still confined. And our thought and thinking patterns are according to the flesh. Especially this time of year. Because we are to proclaim the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not to honor him as a baby in a manger. manger. Never ever. In the whole Bible, we are taught to do that. And the moment when we do that, we look at this picture and we depict a baby as Jesus Christ. We are busy with idolatry. That is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we're on earth to overcome the world and to overcome the sin. 
and to destroy sin and to overcome the devil so that when we believe in him, that his power, his resurrection power from the dead can save us and can break bondages in our lives as well. So the word of God says Jesus became poor. He never grew up in a rich, wealthy home. Jesus was a carpenter and a carpenter, that's a laborer. It wasn't rich people. And when he left his parental home at 30 years of age, he went and lived in the, on the streets. So when the Bible talks here about he, he became poor, it has nothing to do that he left a rich home to live as a bum on, streets, on the streets. It was never like that. Jesus Christ were in heaven. That's why I read the scriptures to you. He were in heaven and in heaven is the richness of, of God and all His riches, all His glory. And what is that riches? We don't walk according to the flesh anymore. In God's heaven, love and, and peace and meekness and goodness and long-suffering and all those beautiful things that we read in the Bible, that is the riches of God. In heaven is the perfect world of love and unity and peace. The moment when Mary, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and she conceived and the body that Jesus Christ were on earth with started to grow. The moment that happened, you were disconnected from the riches of his heavenly home. The riches of Richness of God is not nothing earthly. It's not materialistic things. It is the heavenly things. And that is what Jesus Christ left. He became poor. He became a human being. Like us. We are poor. Doesn't matter how many millions of dollars or rands or whatever you have. Money you have. Wealth you have. You are poor because you are living in this world. Now the word of God says Jesus Christ became poor. He took up this earthly body and we are poor. And we don't realize we are poor. And that's why we accumulate earthly wealth. So that we can say we are rich. But in God's eyes earthly wealth isn't richness. That is not to be rich. The word of God says in James 2 verses 5. He says, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of those who love him? We must be rich in faith. Jesus Christ were rich in faith. He were a poor man, materialistic. If someone didn't invite him to sleep at their homes, he slept out in the wild. That's where Jesus Christ slept. That's where he lived. So if you materialistic poor today, in this festive season, it's a time of immense pressure for gifts and lavish meals. Isn't it so? And family get-togethers. Jesus Christ were alone and he were poor. But you know what? Because he were rich in God, rich in faith. Nobody ever saw Jesus Christ as poor. Because he knew in his heart, his, rich, his riches is in heaven. And he proclaimed the gospel to us. He wanted to share and he still wants to share the richness and the riches of God's kingdom to us. He was so full of the kingdom of God and the riches and the richness of God's kingdom that never ever did anybody thought of him as a poor person. Spiritually, you were also poor. What does a spiritual poor person mean? The word of God says to us so beautifully that... Um, we must be poor in spirit. That is in Matthew 5 verses 3 and Luke 6 verses 20. 
Because if we are poor in spirit, guess what? Then we will inherit the kingdom of God. What does that poor mean? It means you are dependent. It means you can subject, you can submit under the authority of God. And Jesus Christ did so. He submitted himself and did everything. And he prayed and seeked God to, fi to find out what was his will. So that he can teach the people of this world. That they can also inherit this richness of God's kingdom and riches to be rich in faith. He wanted to share that. And he was so full of it. That nobody looked at his earthly poverty. And he didn't care. He didn't care. Because he knew there's a kingdom awaiting him. He's going to live a certain time on earth. And when he died. What will be waiting for him? What will wait for him? What do you know are waiting for you in eternity? If you die today. Are you rich in faith? Are you rich in God? doesn't matter how the world celebrates. Lavishly at this time of year. Poor people go and make loans. They get themselves in financial trouble and debt. Just to live up to the Joneses. Just to have a great festive season. But God says. Today not your abundance of material wealth. Neither your lack of material wealth can separate you from me. But we can permit it to be so. I can use my material wealth and abundance and live so lavishly and never honor God and worship Him and have Him in my life and be poor in faith. And today you can be poor and you can feel so sorry because of your materialistic poor life that you yourself can cut yourself off from God. If you today can open your heart and you can accept Jesus Christ into your life and He can start to live in you and dwell in you and you can start to understand even as a Christian that became lukewarm can start to understand today there's an eternal kingdom that is the way the real wealth and richness is is and this is what Jesus Christ left for a time on earth he became poor so to be poor is not to be uh, to be ashamed of yourself but you today you can be rich in faith as we read in James 2 verse 5 use your circumstances use the place where you are today to become rich in faith and become so rich in faith that you will have a desire like Jesus had this desire this urge to preach the gospel and to live in such a manner that the whole world can be partakers of this richness in God's kingdom. His real wealth. But we need to accept Jesus Christ. We need to repent from our sinful ways. It's not about material abundance or material lack today. It's about to being rich in faith. And if we are not rich in faith, doesn't matter how much wealth we have on earth, we are immensely poor. But today you can have nothing. And you can be rich. And other people will see you as rich. If you are content with your faith. And you can call up uh, unto God. And you can start serving Him. And you can be content with what God has given you. Materialistic and earthly as well. You will be so rich in faith. That you won't even see yourself as poor. Jesus Christ never saw, saw himself as poor. He never went around as a beggar and begged people for money. Because he knew where his real wealth lies. And it's, even if he had to skip a meal. Even if there were, weren't money to, for him to book himself in a nice bed and breakfast or hotel. He slept in the wild. He slept on the ground. Because he knew there is a kingdom waiting for him. And he already started to live in that wealthy kingdom. To such an extent that he was so content and so full. At one stage his disciples presented him with food. 
And he said to him, no, I've, he said to them, I've got food that you don't know of. And I thought to himself, who brought him food? Now he was so full of God that he did not even regard the need of his own fleshly body. Isn't that amazing? Now this time, I want to encourage you, don't become despondent. But don't become despair. If you have more than enough, if you are lonely this time of year, if you are poor, you can be rich in faith. Serve God. Don't go after the world and after the world's pleasures. Serve God in spirit and truth because there's a kingdom awaiting for you. And you must be so full of the kingdom of God that you will want to share it to others in the world like the Lord Jesus Christ did. I hope this message could encourage you and may you have a blessed day. Amen.